Hey guys, it's Liana and I'm here today with another book haul. I decided not to film it crouched on the floor like last time because that was hard on you old knees. This, I don't know, is a better idea because my camera stand is on the same table that my books are and I think it's gonna rattle every time I touch one of these. Exciting times for you guys, little earthquakes at home, shaky cam, woohoo! Um, I also don't know if you can see, but I have like four piles of books. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Don't fall. Oh man, I just realized that I have another book coming. Then maybe I should have waited. I still can wait. It's not too late. But we've gone too far. I have all these books here. Okay. Well, just like last time, there's one special edition book that hasn't arrived yet. Uh, but it will be hauled in due time. Ugh. Pile one, pile two, pile three. Pile four. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I only just did a haul like a couple weeks ago. Whoopsie dipsy. Let's do this. Ooh, first things first. No, we'll do these last when I have space. I don't have any space right now. This is a terrible idea. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, let's just do all the Terry Good Cotton books and let's just get those out of the way. I only had mass market paperbacks of the Sword of Truth books. That's how I read them all. And I got rid of all of them because they were like beat to shit and they were mass markets. And I don't know. I, I know my nemesis, Alan, has spoken up in favor of trade paperbacks, or sorry, not trade paperbacks, of mass market paperbacks. And like, I'm really happy for him, but mass market paperbacks are the worst. <laughs> They're like really hard to read and they look stupid on a bookshelf because like, um, I, for a while when I still had a bunch of mass market paperbacks, like I would always have like one shelf that I'd have to make like super tiny so that it wouldn't be stupid to like have these like books that are this tall and then all this like shelf, like shelf space left over. Uh, but that meant I didn't have any sort of truth books. So now I went out and I found used copies of them, almost all of them in hardcover. I got them for pretty cheap on eBay. It was kind of, I had to pay a little extra for like the first book in the series and for, I think the first and third books I kind of paid for, maybe the first and second, I paid for a little extra, a little more. Um, but like someone was selling like nine of them, like as a set all in one go for a pretty like ridiculously reasonable price. And like I looked at the pictures and they're like pretty good condition. Like they're not like brand new condition, but like pretty good condition. So yeah, that's what a lot of this is. <laughs> so Wizard's First Rule by Terry Goodkind. You know, this is the first book in Sword of Truth. This is like the OG cover. I do have somewhere, I don't know where exactly, a paperback, trade paperback of this one, which is fine. This is like super cheesy old school fantasy cover that like, I mean, to be quite honest, I don't think the artists actually read the book because the characters don't look like this. <laughs> well, like a lot of these, and also like, I don't think it was the same artist for a lot of these because like Richard looks like totally different depending on which cover it is. Yeah, so the, Richard and Kaylin do not look like this <laughs> based on how they're described. Uh, it's a fun cover. So that, that's pretty much how I picture Zed. But yeah, any whoosies. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what this is. It's a sort of truth book. <laughs> All of these are sort of truth books. <laughs> So, Wizard's First Rule, followed by Stone of Tears, which you guys saw me hold up in my April TBR, because I'm rereading Stone of Tears with Bethany in April. So, y'all already saw this one. And again, Richard and Kaylin. I don't, I don't know who this is supposed to be. That doesn't look like Richard or Kaylin. <laughs> then, Blood of the Fold. This is when the book started getting weird. <laughs> At number three, but I read like 10 of them, <laughs> regardless. Yeah, Blood of the Fold. It was <laughs> Richard and Kaylin. I don't know how many different kinds of dude they can get on these covers and yet still none of them look like Richard. <laughs> oh my god. It's like how the, I don't know who funded that project. You know how like they made three movies out of uh, Atlas Shrugged and each of the movies has like a different person playing Dagny and a different person playing like all the, like it's totally recast for each of them. So, like all these covers look like they recast everybody, but it still doesn't look like how they're supposed to look. <sighs> oh, old school fantasy covers. You make me laugh. And then, oh, these are all out of order. Okay. Then, oh, this is a real test. Do I even remember what order they go in? Those go there. Then, this is definitely the weirdest of all the ones I read. There's the, like, the last couple I never actually read. So I might read them now that I have them. But Temple of the Winds, which is book four, is so, so weird. It's so deeply bizarre. I don't really know why I kept reading. I mean, I do because I still like the characters and like, I feel like by that point, it's kind of like a TV series that you like are like seven seasons into and like season seven's a little funky, but you're like, well, but I'm still gonna watch season eight. <laughs> That's kind of how this feels. Because I read this one and I was just like, what in the holy heck was that? But then I went on to read book five, so, so whatever. But 
Once again, Richard looks totally different. <laughs> it still doesn't look like how Richard's supposed to look. Oh my God. Can we all just agree that Richard looks like Thor? Just get Chris Hemsworth on the cover. Problem solved. Then we have, where is it? Oh, right here. Soul of the Fire, which is book five, which was definitely more normal than Temple of the Winds, but also slightly more boring for that reason. I remember Soul of the Fire being like, was that when I really started feeling like these books were getting samey. I was like, when you, again, like when you watch a TV show and you're like on season five and you're like, you guys have run out of ideas. This is the same plot line again. You just like changed some names and stuff, but this is the same thing that you guys have been doing. So Soul of the Fire is like not super bonkers, but was also boring. Then my favorite, even though it's probably the most Ayn Randy of them all, is Faithful, uh, The Faith of the Fallen. And once again, that's supposed to be Richard. That <laughs> doesn't look anything like Richard. Uh, I remember not really looking forward to this one and putting it off for a long time. Because, I don't know, I saw these statues on the cover. And I also, because I knew how the previous one ended, I was like, I don't think the next one's going to be that interesting. And then it ended up being my favorite. And in, in, in retrospect, I read it for the first time now. I'd probably find the Ayn Randiness of it more objectionable. But as I've said to a lot of people, a lot of the, like, heavy-duty Ayn Randiness. <laughs> of these books I like can very easily overlook it because I feel like this type of thinking and logic when in like a super tropey cliche fantasy world don't listen Terry I'm talking about how your books are fantasy and you know you don't like to hear that it's not good you don't want to hear it so don't listen go away I don't like having a hero of a fantasy book you know, talk about some like pull yourself up by your bootstraps, fight for what is right for goodness and for wrath and for ruin and blah blah blah. Like, doesn't bother me. I read plenty of fantasy books where like we're rooting for a monarchy and we're rooting for like the restoration of the rightful bloodline to the throne. And like, okay, I don't believe that a monarchical dynasty is the right way to rule a country, but in a fantasy book, like, yeah, I'm on board with rooting for that plot line because like a bunch of fantasy plot lines are like the lost prince must be like i don't give a shit having that be the plot line in a book like this like i don't i don't really care because i don't think that this is philosophy i don't think that this is like a deep allegory that we should be learning life lessons from again i told you terry not to listen you know you don't like to hear this so yeah to me it's just like a stupid fantasy fable fairy tale where like where magic people with magic swords can like save the day from like by the strength of their will in newsies yeah so yeah, I liked this one a lot. Then came Pillars of Creation, um, which was a bit long, but there were some new characters that I've been looking forward to meeting. So it was like, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Not, not my fave, but pretty solid. And I think this is the last one that I ever read. So the next three are all new to me and they look like fucking Easter eggs. <laughs> I don't know why they're so brightly colored. Oh, they look so pastel. And also we gave up trying to draw Richard. <laughs> no more was anyone going to be trying to give us another version of Richard. These I think all have Kayla on the cover. Because I think this is like a sub-trilogy within the series. And I think these three mainly focus on Kaylin. Um, Chainfire. <sighs> confessor. Obviously we need to focus on Kaylin because she's the mother confessor. And Phantom, which once again looks like it's focusing on Kaylin. Also, can we agree that Terry Goodkind looks like the villain of an 80s karate movie. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. You're hilarious. Yeah, so I, I don't know what these are like, but I'll read them probably. Why not? We've gone this far. And then also, we have The Omen Machine, a Richard and Kaylin novel. Now, I I mean, these are all Richard and Kaylin novels because all of these books are about Richard and Kaylin, but apparently there was like a sub-series within the series that are the Richard and Kaylin novels. That'd be like if you had a new series in Harry Potter, but it was like a new sub-series, but these would be called like the Harry, Ron, and Hermione books. And you're like, okay, but like low-key, aren't they all Harry, Ron, and Hermione books? So yep, yeah, some point I'll probably read this too. He looks almost unrecognizable though. He definitely changed his look a lot. I wouldn't, if I didn't know 
like if it wasn't on the back of the book, I would not think that these were the same person. So yeah, that's my good kind collection. My roommate is very pleased. Um, then we have the book that I mentioned in my previous haul that I was like, I was like thinking about waiting for that one. And then I didn't. That is the Waterstones edition of Chain of Iron. Uh, Cause it's pretty as fuck. That's why I own it. Don't need another reason. It is like one of the prettiest books that I own. I mean, the uh, Waterstones edition of Chain of Gold is also very pretty. It was like dark, I shouldn't say it is, it's not was dark blue with, I think it was fleur de lis as like the recurring like pattern. These are obviously moths and it's this like mossy green color. This is my favorite color of green and green is my second favorite color after orange. It will make my life if the third book in this series, the Water Sense edition is orange because that, that'll just be the prettiest book series I own then. Just straight up. Yeah, super hope that I like this series. <laughs> I haven't read the first one yet. Oh, but speaking of, I don't intend to start reading the new, what's it called? The Last Hours? Gilded Hours? Some kind of hours? Uh, I do intend to read the Dark Artifices before I read that. So I got Lady Midnight and Lord of Shadows because I do have the hardcover of, what the fuck is the third one? Queen of Air and Darkness because I went to the signing for it. So this is the, the only one of this trilogy that I had in this hardcover was the third one. And then I had a regular paperback of the first one and then no, oh, and then I have the Waterstones edition of the second one, it was all over the place. I just wanted to have a matching set and I like this size and shape of book to be reading. Like the Waterstones ones are way too fucking pretty. Of course I'm not gonna read those. They're like, that's art, gotta ensure that. But these I'll read. So yeah, I decided to get them so that I could read them. You know, like how you're supposed to buy books to read them. And um, then my pre-order, a rule of wolves came in. Oh, actually, yeah, I have two books coming. So I have the one that I was thinking of earlier. So I was like, that's still coming. But also I did order the Illumicrate edition of Rule of Wolves, which I'm low-key regretting because I'm already hearing that as bad as King of Scars was, Rule of Wolves is worse. Right, row. I also, okay, this, I don't know if this will make sense to anyone else, but I don't know what color this book is. Every time I look at it, my brain is like, what color is that? I'm looking at it and I don't know. So like in fantasy books or like magical realism books where like something will be described as it was the absence of color or it was a color that the eye had never seen before. There was no word for it. That's how I feel about this. I keep staring at it and I thought maybe the picture was weird before it arrived. And I was like, well, when I get the book, I'll be able to tell. I don't know this. What color is this? This isn't silver. I know what silver looks like. And it's definitely not gold. King of Scars is gold. What color is this? I just, I'm so confused by it. It breaks my brain so much. Okay, but the naked book, I know what color that is and that's pretty. I'm so upset to learn that this is gonna be shit because it's such a pretty book. Maybe I just won't read it. It'll just stay pretty for me forever. Then I got a hardcover edition of The Last Argument of Kings. So this was the only one of the trilogy that I didn't have in hardcover in like this edition. Ugh, I think I've hauled them before. These are all in much shittier condition because I got them from thrift books. Played itself and before they were hanged. The only one I didn't have is The Last Argument of Kings. And this is the nicest because it's not from thrift books. I got it from eBay. Slightly more monies. It's not signed or anything. It's just in better condition. I did try ordering it from thrift books, but it was like so beat to shit and didn't even have a book jacket. So I was like, fine, I'll pay more monies. Then I have my book of the month for April because it already arrived. I'm not super behind like I usually am on book calls. And I got people we meet on vacation. So this is like a spoiler for my April TBR. No, May TBR is I'm reading my book of the month in the subsequent month. So this instance is my April book of the month. Oh my God, can you shut the fuck up out there? I'm trying to film a video. Are you done? Okay. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, my God. Okay, yeah, so since I'm reading the previous month's book of the month in the subsequent month, then my May TBR will have People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, which I have heard good things about and I've heard good things for me about because I really liked Beach Read, which is the one she wrote before this, which I also got from Book of the Month last year. But I really liked that Beach Read, even though it's a contemporary romance, kind of leaned more towards being lit fakey and its appeal. And I've heard that People We Meet on Vacation leans even more towards the lit fakey side of things than Beach Read did. And that was one of, that's what I quite liked about Beach Read is that it was, more lit -fiky. So I'm very excited to read this. I think I will like it. And I'm, I'm, even though I've only read one book by her, I really liked her writing style. So I've bought a lot of Emily Henry books since then that I haven't read yet, but 
I have high hopes. And we're, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Okay, so next I have The Toll by Neil Shusterman because I read Thunderhead in March. What is time? I loved Thunderhead. I heard a lot of people say that Thunderhead was better than Scythe, except for my dad. My dad read Thunderhead and he didn't like it. So I put it off for a long time, but everyone else was right. Sorry, dad, you're wrong. Thunderhead was great. Thunderhead was amazing. And, uh, but then when I was like talking about it on Instagram about how I was reading Thunderhead and loving it, a bunch of people DM'd me and were like, oh, well the way Thunderhead ends, you're gonna wanna read the toll like immediately. So before I finished Thunderhead, I ordered the toll and then I finished Thunderhead and I was like, well, fuck, <laughs> you're not wrong. I have to read the toll immediately, but it's not on my April TBR. My April TBR is busting, <laughs> but I got it anyway. I don't know why, because it is entirely unrealistic that I will just squeeze it into my April TBR. But I just, I was like, it's one step closer to reading it if I own it. Then I've got The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. I don't think I hauled this yet. Hope I didn't, and if I did, sorry. Um, but this is the, uh, my April, the, the April buddy read for my patrons. This is what we picked, or they picked, or we picked what was picked, what was picked <laughs> collectively for us to read together in April. So I acquired it right quick so that I could read it. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's the first book in the Inheritance Cycle? Yeah, or the Inheritance Trilogy. Oh, the Inheritance Cycle, is that, is that the books by Christopher Paolini? Is that what that's called? Well, whatever. Yeah, so this is the first book in a trilogy. The second book is The Broken Kingdom, and the third book is The Kingdom of Gods. So yeah. Ta-da! Uh, then this is because of my nemesis. Alan from the Library of Alexandria will not shut up about the Long Prize Quartet. They are difficult to find. I got these from thrift books. They are all different sizes and different editions, which is delightful. Any hoosies. Um, yeah, so I got, this is apparently a bind up. So they sell, I guess they sold for books one and two of the Long Prize Quartet as a bind up. So I couldn't get book one by itself. So I got Shadow and Betrayal, which is a bind up of Shadow and Summer and Betrayal in Winter. So I also got, because I honestly didn't realize that when I was ordering them. I got uh, Betrayal in Winter by itself, even though it's in here, and then an Autumn by itself. And this is the only one that's like normal. <laughs> uh, this is like a weird bind up. It's also a library edition. So it's like covered in marks. This is obviously a library edition because it doesn't have a book jacket. It's just, that's the cover. This is the only fucking normal one. That's like a hardcover book with a dust jacket that was never owned by a library. So that's, this is my favorite. Also, it's orange. So I hope I get there. <laughs> but the way Alan goes on about these books. So the, the reason that he convinced me, because there's a lot of books he likes that I hate. So I don't ever just take Alan's word for it, because if anything, if he likes it, I should probably avoid it. But he keeps talking about how it is like Shakespearean in its tragedy. And like, your girl is like trash for Shakespeare. So he, as soon as he said that, I was like, well, now I'm interested. <laughs> so I bought him. And these better be freaking good, Alan. They better be. And last but most certainly not least, I think last time I ended on a, some kind of a special Abercrombie thing. I almost definitely did. Some more Abercrombie goodness. Oh, they do have numbers on them. I thought I was so clever for figuring this out. Okay. What these are, are the Russian editions of the First Law Trilogy. However, I don't speak Russian, but I, I was figuring out which is which based on like the little symbols on it. I was like, well, that'll be the blade itself. That'll be before they are hanged. And that'll be the last argument of King. I am correct. But they, in fact, have little numbers on them. I mean, I was right, but it didn't have to work that hard. Okay, so these look probably not that impressive. Like, they're fine, but why would I go out of my way to get Russian editions when the Russian edition is just like, you know, like, it's fine? Because the naked cover on each is illustrated. So we've got my boy Galacta heading into the house of the maker. And here is the Agriant in all of its splendor. Super hardcore in love with this. Also the end pages are quite nice, but yeah, just, just absolutely in love with that. Then for Before They Are Hanged, we have the whole crew. We have, uh, fuck, it's backwards. Logan and Pharaoh and Giselle and Baez. And I guess that's Kwai back there. Kind of hard to tell. Anyway, the whole crew on their merry adventure. And then, I guess this is a spoiler, but I don't really think it is. We have Logan Nine Fingered fighting somebody and people watching. Everyone is shocked to learn that in one of these books, Logan will be fighting somebody with people watching. So shout out and massive thank you to Elena who helped me order these. You are a rock star. I could not have ordered these without you. 
I would have tried and I would have failed and it would have gone very badly and money would have been spent and books would not have been acquired and it would have been a shit show. So thank you so much for first letting me know they existed and two helping me to acquire them because I didn't know I needed these but I definitely definitely needed these. So let me know in the comments down below stuff and things about the books that I acquired. Um, about. I mean, that's really all I talked about is books that I acquired. So you're gonna have to be talking about books that I acquired. Say hello to Terry. I'll pass it on. Whatever you want to let me know. <laughs> I post videos on Saturdays. Other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like, subscribe. I have a Patreon now, which you are welcome to join as well. What do we do on Patreon? I don't know. I post Patreon videos. Patreon buddy read. Patreon discord. you know, Patreon-y type things. So if you feel so inclined, feel free to join us or don't. It's entirely up to you. <laughs> anyway, that's all for me. Bye. <laughs> A little bit of housekeeping. Um, I'm not gonna talk about the video that will not be named at all ever at any point so don't expect that but i do want to mention that if you messaged me or left me a comment um that was like supportive i may not have seen it and i probably won't see it because i turned off notifications for youtube entirely and for this foreseeable future i do not intend to turn notifications back on so I so deeply appreciate anybody who reached out to me. I cannot, words cannot possibly express how much I appreciated it and continue to appreciate it. But yeah, so uh, for, again, for the foreseeable future, I will only be looking directly, specifically at comments on the most recent video that I've posted. Um, so if you're commenting on something older, I probably won't see it. I am saddened that I won't see it. I love reading comments. Um, I will probably still occasionally check uh, the comments on some of my more like staple videos, like the ones that people will tend to find my channel through, like my first law, gush, uh, my favorite books of all time, those kind of videos. But for the most part, I will only check the comments on whatever is the latest video that I've posted. So just FYI, um, I'm not ignoring you. I guess I, I mean, I technically, I guess I, that is ignoring you, <laughs> but um, I don't know any other way that I can go about this and maintain my sanity. So that's what I'm doing. So I just want to let you know that that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm sad that that's what I am going to be doing or feel that I need to do, but that's how it is. So it is what it is. I just wanted to keep you in the loop. So yeah, uh, really and truly, that's it from me. Um, as I said before, I post videos on Saturdays. Other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe, and I'll see you when I see you.